Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. In 2012-13, two giants of the game clashed in the semi-final stage of the Champions League. Before the match, Bayern may have been slight favourites, but not many would have predicted the 4-0 blowout that would ensue, with goals coming thanks to a double by Müller, Mario Gomez and Arjen Robin. But what tactics did Jupp Heynckes and Tito Villanova use during the encounter? In this video, we take a look. A quick reminder of the formations. The home team Bayern Munich lined up in their preferred 4-2-3-1 as shown, with a midfield trio of Martinez, Schweinsteiger and Thomas Müller, and Mario Gomez leading the line. In response, Barcelona stuck to their trusted 4-3-3, with Messi at false 9, Sanchez on the left and Pedro starting as the right winger. Now, as Barcelona dominated the ball with 66% possession, we'll start by looking at what they looked to do during the build-up phase. Of course, Barcelona looked to play out from the back through their centre-backs Piquet and Marc Bartra. Bayern were very adaptable in how they looked to deal with this. Mario Gomez was the key to the press, as he would determine where Bayern Munich would begin their press. When Bayern were being aggressive, Gomez would push onto one of the centre-backs and Thomas Müller would be quick to join him on the other centre-back in order to force them into hurried passes, be it going long to the forwards or being forced into a sloppy pass into midfield. But more commonly, Bayern allowed Barca to come through their own third relatively unchallenged, led by Gomez dropping deeper. Instead, one of their main goals would be to cut the service into Busquets, and they did this successfully as he was much less influential than usual, only completing the six more passes for the team. This was achieved by Gomez initially picking him up and another midfielder following up to then allow Gomez to press using his cover shadow to stop the supply into Busquets. Stopping this was crucial, because when Busquets has time, it allows Iniesta and Xavi to stay much higher up the pitch, closer to the opponent's goal, and as a result be a much bigger creative danger. Instead, now, one of Iniesta and Xavi would have to drop deep into the space to become the outlet when building up. But Bayern were always aggressive in pressing the second pivot, either through Müller or one of their own pivots, but they were always sure to deny any easy passes into these central areas by backing up this press. But initially, Barca had success trying to beat this deep press. Messi often shifted deeper into midfield, as he was struggling to get any touches higher up the pitch, which made it harder for a Bayern pivot to join the press. Ribéry was often Bayern's answer to this, as he often pushed narrow to try and press the man and take time away from him. This aggression in the press by the wingers is shown as Robin and Ribéry completed six tackles and interceptions each. When this worked effectively, if Barcelona found Alves with the ball, Martinez would be quick to shift across and join the press. However, if Martinez or Schweinsteiger didn't make this move, it meant that Barcelona would now have a 2 vs 1 situation on the flanks that they could look to exploit. Higher up the pitch on the right hand side, Barcelona used variations of this attack. Pedro was keen to drop deeper and central from his right wing position, and as Bayern didn't want a free man central as it could potentially free Messi, it meant that Alaba was quick to follow Pedro into these deeper regions. We can see Pedro's tendency to come central and deep in his average positioning. This would then often leave acres of space for Dani Alves to run into and receive the switch and look to create or advance and attempt the cross and this almost led to a tap in for Messi when the cross came in from Dani Alves. On the left, Barcelona operated slightly differently. As Bayern made progress into the centre of the pitch difficult by remaining compact centrally, Barca had to use the flanks and they opted for side overloads to do this. Sanchez would often move into the inside left channel with Iniesta in support. This would then free Jordi Alba to make the third man run to try and receive the ball and look for the cross, which at times they would manage and they almost created a big chance in this way.
However, the role of Thomas Muller in these phases was critical. Whichever side the boar was on, instead of remaining central, he would push out to the flank and ensure that there was no outlet into zone 14, and that Barcelona were forced backwards instead, which slowed down a lot of their attacks. But these defensive scenarios were where Bayern were most dangerous. As Barcelona built slowly with controlled play, it meant that they often had several men, especially their fullbacks, in positions high up. And it was usually when Barca tried to get the ball into these central areas for players like Messi, where Bayern would then contract around the ball and look to win it. This would then lead into the transition, where Bayern were lethal, and with several quick players and hard workers, they would overload Barcelona in the transition, and importantly, Bayern wouldn't try to transition into a build-up play, and instead immediately look to penetrate, and they created good scenarios in this manner. We see elements of this in Robin's goal. Ribéry picks up the ball deep, and after driving the ball up the pitch behind Alvarez, we see Bayern flooding men forwards to make them difficult to pick up, and eventually Robin scores from this scenario. Now, how about Bayern when they were building up? How did they go about it? When under pressure, Bayern were much more comfortable going long, as Müller and Gomez could flick on the ball with the other looking to win the second ball, as they were both physical presences. In addition, Bayern tended to stagger their pivots and push the front four high to win the second ball. But when possible, Bayern also looked to play out from the back. This often involved splitting their centre backs and using a third man to create a 3 vs 3 in this zone whilst allowing their full backs to push higher up the pitch. This third man could be formed either by Neuer pushing higher or one of Schweinsteiger and Martinez joining deeper. But Barca's press was ineffective, primarily because Messi was very inactive in the press, taking up the position but not actually trying to win the ball back. As a result, a midfielder, either Xavi or Iniesta, would have to push high up to make up for the lack of work rate. So where Barcelona's wide midfielders could have potentially covered the fullbacks when they were at three, with just two men, the Barca wingers instead had to choose whether to press the centre-backs or the advanced full-backs. In addition, a piercing pass could find a man in midfield, as Barca were now a man light as he had pushed high up to press. The full-backs were key to the Bayern attacks. Ribéry tended to stay wider in general, and Alaba was keen to join him in the transition, running off of Pedro when he was high up and creating a 2 vs 1 in this region. Bayern managed to create decent chances in this manner, with Ribéry looking to feed Alaba for the cross, although Barca managed to block the crosses at times. Alaba does manage to get an assist for Müller's second goal in this manner, flashing the cross into a good area. On the right-hand side, the relationship between Lahm and Robin was just as important. The only significant difference was that Robin was able to cut in more often which meant that Lam was tasked with providing the width in these zones, which he was happy to do, attempting the most open play crosses for the team. Importantly, Bayern often didn't commit both fullbacks at the same time. In fact, the speed of the attacks meant that the Bavarians had more men staying deep, so they weren't remotely as vulnerable to the counter-attacks as Barcelona was during this encounter. Overall, it was a match which will go down in Champions League history with such a lopsided scoreline where despite having minimal possession, it felt as though Bayern were in control for most of the match. Let me know down in the comments below if you'd be interested in seeing a tactical analysis of the second leg at the new camp. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out our dedicated review on Heinkiss' Bayern team to get a broader look at how they played throughout the season. But what do you remember of the match? And how did you feel about both managers' tactics? Drop it down in the comments below. A quick shout out to my Patreons for helping to make this video possible. If you want to support, head on over to patreon.com slash simple and you'll get rewards like early access to videos and exclusive content. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.